And there it is. There we go. <laughs> Please proceed. So I didn't introduce myself either. I'm Stephanie Agigian. I'm Executive Director of Empowered Pathways. And I'm going to let Regina introduce herself too. Hi, I'm Regina Brown. I'm the Alternative Dispute Resolution Specialist and also the Youth Services Specialist at Empowered Pathways. So Regina is kind of my right hand person and uh, I don't think I could do what I do without her. So, uh, but, um, so we do a couple of things and one of them is community dispute resolution. And in fact, we are the designated community dispute resolution uh, center for Oneida and Madison counties. We are funded by the unified court system and all of our mediators and, um, and volunteer mediators are trained by um, trainers that are um, certified by the, unified, the New York State Unified Court System. And our mediators um, are not only the basic training is 30 hours of training and then a six month apprenticeship where they shadow other mediators. And then from there, there's various trainings um, it seems like we're always going to training, but it's a good thing because it helps us to hone our skills and learn more so um, in the dispute resolution field. So on the dispute resolution uh, side of our program, or um, we call it alternative dispute resolution because it's, it's oftentimes an alternative to more formal legal processes like court. Um, we can deal with almost any kind of dispute from dispute between two neighbors um, to small claims disputes where, you know, maybe somebody um, did a construction, a small construction job uh, for you and, and uh, you paid, but you didn't feel you got, you know, exactly what you were supposed to get and you want to have some money returned. Oftentimes those get filed in small claims. And those can go to mediation for the two parties to work out an agreement. And uh, we have the ability to draw up agreements and um, help the uh, disputants to get them filed in court so that they become a legally binding agreement. Um, we can also do family, a lot of family mediation. So we do custody visitation and um, and we can also work out child support agreements between two parties. And this year has been an interesting year for child custody visitation. Um, in the beginning of the uh, COVID um, pandemic, there were disagreements between parents on, on you know, um, how to keep children safe when they returned to school, whether it could be virtual, whether they wanted their children to um, returned to school, and we were seeing a lot of those, um, a lot of those disputes. Um, we can also, um, we do Lemon Law. That comes down to us from the state, so not directly, but um, from the state, um, New York State Dispute Resolution Association. Agricultural mediation, which I, you know, four years ago, I didn't even know what that was, but um, Apparently things such as, um, an example I'll give, um, if someone has an organic farm and a neighbor is doing something, putting something into the ground that uh, violates um, their ability to be <laughs> um, organic farmer, they can come to mediation and um, try to resolve that issue. So, um, Lately, we've been, uh, we've been getting busy with landlord tenant mediations um, with the um, kind of looming end to the governor's uh, moratorium on evictions. Um, landlords are in crisis, tenants are in crisis. Uh, some of them didn't even realize that they had to pay this money back that they didn't pay. Um, and so we're um, starting to get calls and we're also starting to get referrals from the courts. Um, I will say that mediation is voluntary. Um, it has to be voluntary because if two people are gonna sit down and work out their differences, they have to be willing to at least to come to the table, right? So um, that's why it absolutely has to be voluntary. So if one party wants to mediate and the other doesn't, then we can't do it. And so then um, if, it's a, if it's something that can be uh, resolved by the courts, they can go back to court. Um, 
if it isn't something that can be resolved by the courts, if it's not um, some kind of legal matter and it's just, you know, it's a, it's a workplace dispute, dispute, it's a neighbor dispute, some, we can do something called conflict coaching. And Regina, I'm gonna throw it to you for this because you do a lot of conflict coaching. <laughs> yes, I do. So that's when you, it's um, an individual independent with two people one-on-one -on -one process where you don't look back into the history, you move the person forward through the uh, conflict that they're having in hopes of trying to come up with a different way that they can, a different strategy of how they can proceed with it or how in the future they could do set of different coping skills with it and um, have a different outcome than they had initially. So that's pretty much what we do with that. And conflict coaching, it can be just one of the disputants, one of the parties. It sure so, can. Yeah, so sometimes, if there is, you know, and, and these disputes, they become very personal sometimes. Sometimes they're between friends, um, you know, neighbors who had been friends at one point, but something happened and that friendship fell apart. So they can be very hurtful and uh, very painful. And um, if they can't come to mediation um, and only one party wanted to sit down and talk about it, we can still work with them through conflict coaching to help them sort of, um, uh, move forward with the, and live with the conflict, not necessarily confront the person or talk to the person, but just, you know, what could be done differently in the future if you have a conflict of this sort. So um, those are some things that we do. Um, Regina, I'm also going to let you talk about your program in the schools. Absolutely. So another thing we do, we do parent teen mediation, and that can be anyone outside of the school. It doesn't matter if, if a parent's having a conflict with their child, we mediate those things too. And sometimes they come with an agreement and sometimes they just wanna sit down and communicate with each other. So when it comes to schools, we do something called attendance mediation. Um, we try to coordinate between the school and the, the parent and the child, bring them to the table so that they can have a conversation. They come up with an agreement that is doable for everybody involved. So prior to the attendance mediation, I make sure that I have a conversation with the child because if we don't have the child's input into the mediation, you know, we can come up with every agreement we want on our own, but without that child being there saying, this is actually what's going on and this is how I feel, it really doesn't work. So we, we do that. And um, we also do some different restorative practices. We do some community circles and we do some restorative circles. And that's kind of a complex um, situation. It's kind of challenging to kind of talk about but what it is, is we use a talking piece, and I don't know if anybody is familiar with that. So it's, it's more structured, and it gives us the ability to talk like one-on-one, -on -one. we'll go in a circle, and we will pretty much um, make sure that everybody's voice is heard in that process. It's some of it, like I said, is to build community, and some of them is to repair harm. Yeah, it could be a good way to have a dialogue as well, especially if there's folks that are having trouble communicating with each other. So. Um, I did also um, want to mention the uh, probation. Uh, we get referrals from probation of kids that have been in trouble. And uh, Regina is out often doing either um, some kind of restorative practice with them. For instance, we had a situation where um, a teenager vandalized a home. Um, it was, it was do you, actually, you can talk about that. You know better than I do about this situation. Yeah, that was a really, really tough one. The teenager had actually, in the daytime, he had kicked in somebody's door. And there was, a, <clears throat> there was a gentleman in the backyard that saw the whole thing. And basically, he ended up taking him to court, ended up going through probation. But I had to, probation gave me the referral. I got involved. And what happened, unfortunately, um, was the gentleman ended up having cancer. He had cancer. And so his wife was dealing with me. She was calling me from Boston. We were trying to coordinate something. We were initially going to do a conference with this young man and see if we could kind of talk to him and, and let him know the harm that he had done to this family and to the community because everybody was scared at this point. So as I said, the gentleman ended up dying. I ended up, um, the wife called me back and she wanted to do an impact statement, a victim impact statement. So I got in touch with probation. We worked that out. Um, I read what the woman wrote on behalf of her husband and herself to this young man. And um, it was really, really a tough one because it basically- was, Yeah, it was a very powerful process too. It was very, very powerful because, you know, here is a woman. And basically what, 
I said to the young man was, um, because he told me that he, the guy was grimace, grimacing at him. He said, you know, he was looking at me. I didn't like the way he looked at me. So basically I just said to him, now that you know that this young, this man had cancer, do you think possibly he could have been grimacing in pain? Do you think possibly he could have been thinking about his wife who he left behind and what her future would be without him? And I said, I just want you in your private moments, I just want you to sit down and I want you to think about that when you're alone. That's all I ask. Yeah. And that pretty much was really, really powerful. And I took that back to the wife and, you know. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of different aspects to the uh, community dispute resolution. And um, sometimes it can be a really great process. Like I said, sometimes the folks are friends or relatives and they've known each other. And um, even in small claims cases, we've had friends sue friends for, I think there was a situation where um, there was a, a box of very expensive tools that um, had been lent, lent to a friend or a neighbor and they didn't return it. And, and when they got into mediation, they just started <laughs> talking and it became really evident that this was just about hurt feelings. It wasn't about the tools. It wasn't about the money. And um, they came to an agreement, but they left talking to each other. So that's when the process, when it's at its best, it can be really um, even inspiring for the mediators to watch this happen. And all we do is facilitate a conversation. We don't give opinions, we don't give advice. Sometimes, sometimes the parties will ask us, well, what do you think? We don't think anything. Well, you know, this is about what you think. So, um, and that just creates the space for them to have a dialogue and come to a resolution if they choose to do so. Um, so that's a little bit about our mediation side. Uh, we also have um, the Women's Employment and Resource Center. So the Women's Employment and Resource Center, and that's actually how I came. I came from the Women's Employment and Resource Center side um, into this merger. And uh, we've been, a, that part of our program has been around about 33 years. And we help train women to get back into the workforce. Uh, many of the women that we work with are, um, have lost their primary income um, due to divorce or separation or the loss of a longtime partner who may have been the primary support person. Um, or um, we work with a lot of uh, single moms on public assistance that are uh, trying really hard to work towards uh, self-sufficiency. So we start with uh, resumes and um, skill building and we teach computer skills, we teach customer service. Um, interview skills is a big one, especially since a lot of interviews are being done on Zoom now. And that's a whole nother world to the women that we work with. And as you know, as you can see, even on these calls, um, there's a lot of nuances, you know, my background, <laughs> um, you know, just paying attention to, you know, what is in your background when you're on an interview. So uh, we've been doing, um, especially um, a lot of training on technology lately and how to use Zoom and how to use it WebEx and, and how do you um, interact on a Zoom call. So, um, and then we help place them in employment and support them even after they've been placed in employment. So there's kind of these two, we have some other smaller programs, but the primary uh, components to Empowered Pathways are the employment program and the mediation program. So that's a quick overview. <laughs> um, if you have questions, um, we'd be happy to, um, to try to answer them. Yeah. Regina, I'm interested in the, um, the attendance mediation. I can't remember exactly what you called it, but um, so that is between the student the parent and the school? Yes, correct. Are there other teachers involved in that? Sort of like an IEP kind of a uh, setup? Well, that's or? a different process. They, we do also, we, that's special education mediation. So that's a little bit different. But for us, yes, there are other teachers involved. We always want to have a teacher that can speak to the academics of the child involved too. So yes, there's, they are they are involved as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Are these 
are, are you, do courts mandate and recognize you guys as, as a, you know what, I don't mean legitimate, but sometimes it's like, you know, it has to be uh, recognized, I guess, by the courts for yeah. mandated so, mediation. Yeah. Uh, because we are uh, contracted with the unified court system, we have relationships with um, all the local courts. It's up to them whether they refer to us or not, but most of them do. As, as far as like um, mandating clients, because the, they can do that and they sometimes do that, but because the process on our end is voluntary, it's we can't we can't recognize um, someone who's mandated. So we always have to ask: Is this something you know that you want to participate in? Do you you know are you willing to mediate? Are you willing to come to the table? So if one party says no, it it always gets um, referred back to the court. And we have a process for doing that. So we communicate. We make sure that we communicate with the courts and explain. Um, if we can't mediate, why we can't mediate. And um, so um, we've maintained a, real, a good working relationship with the courts for the entire time that our mediation program has been in existence, was, which is about 27 years. What are your fees or how are your rate structure and all? Um, so for most of our processes, we don't have any fees because we're, we have funding to cover that. Um, there are, and, and, and for things that we might have fees for, it's, um, it's sliding scale, very minimal. I don't even know, Regina, what, what do we still have fees for? I'm not even sure. Well, to be honest with COVID, we really have not been charging. We waived, that's, yeah. Um, so, if a referral didn't come from the court, because they don't have to come from the courts, someone can self-refer. They can say, you know, so-and-so owes me money. I want to sit down with them and, and mediate. So if we got a referral that didn't come from the court, oftentimes we'd recommend that they file in court. But if they didn't want to do that, then we would charge a small fee. Um, but since COVID happened, we've waived all the fees so that, um, so we're not charging anything. I mean, the most important thing is for people to sit down and try to work out their differences, particularly in uh, landlord tenant cases. Um, if they self-referred, we had a small fee and we've we've waived that fee because it's, it's just too important and we don't want money to be an issue. So we used to do divorce mediation and there were some fees for that. Um, we've stopped doing divorce mediation for a variety of reasons. Um, <laughs> um, we just didn't feel that, um, that uh, we were doing, we felt that the clients would be better off represented by counsel or going to um, an attorney for divorce mediation. So we stopped doing that, but there were, there were fees for that yeah. at the time that we were doing it, so. That was my philosophy. I will say, let me clarify. That was my philosophy when I came to the program. So that was one of the changes I made. We're not going to do divorce mediation anymore. So, and my husband's an attorney, so that might have had something to do. With that. We've had to use your services one time, and the check is in the mail, by the way. So. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Um, Larry, I have um, some uh, handouts that I can send to you that you can distribute to. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. It, where it, it seems logical that empowered pathways would be useful to us. We've had instances where there have been disputes, personnel disputes, an unruly employee in a church, session disputes where there's an unruly session member in a church. The, our form of government mandates that, that the, the presbytery should step in and assist in resolution. But what became clear to me a few months ago is the presbytery is suspect from the minute it crosses the threshold. And it would be much more effective to have a disinterested third party engage and help settle some of these things. Mm -hmm. Sarah Ayala, who is an at-large member of our coordinating council, is one of the mediators for Empowered Pathways. 
So I talked to Sarah, Sarah connected us with Stephanie and Regina and bada boom, bada bing, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> so when you have issues that arise in the church and they do arise, then you can let us know. We can engage Stephanie and Regina to see if they can step in and, uh, and help come to a, a peaceful and successful resolution for all parties. I'm most intrigued by what you said about uh, coaching, conflict, conflict coaching. Conflict coaching, yes. Because I can envision any one of a number of cases where some you'll have two parties that are in dispute, but only one of them wants to talk about it. Yeah. The others say, oh, there's no issue. We're fine. Don't worry about it. Well, I don't believe you. <laughs> so maybe the other person would like to, to talk with you. So that's really good information. Yeah, yeah, that would be perfect. That's exactly what we do. Yeah. Any other questions? Would you guys be available for like, a, I'll call it a lunch and learn. We typically, not, we typically after worship, particularly, you know, obviously outside of summer have you know, uh, coffee hour afterwards, and then, you know, oftentimes we might have a speaker or, and have a light lunch or something like that. And we've had other groups come in, and I think a lot of people would, would like to know more about than what I could convey, you know, secondhand. Absolutely. Yeah, we'd be happy to do that. So would we reach out to you and Regina or either of um, You can reach out to me and, um, you know, I'll go from there. So, yeah. Go to the Empowered Pathways website to get their contact information. And um, I'll share, um, I'll send you some uh, handouts, Larry, that you can, you know, you can share with um, this group or, you know, whoever you choose to, so. All right, well, Stephanie. Regina, thank you very much. It was very helpful. Thank you for the opportunity. All right. And uh, we're here if you need us, so. Thank you. <laughs> as, as we said some time ago, I'm sure our empowered pathways will cross again. So. I love that. <laughs> I, love it, so I actually have used it. All right, thank you all. All right, friends, bye thank now. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.